Hello viewers, today we're at the Nürburgring. You may have followed my last two videos where I got my permit and I also did my first drive in the Bilstein race car. So this video is my first laps in the Bilstein race car around the Nürburgring Nordschleife. We try and cross the pit lane. First up, Mr. Misha. Hello there, viewers. I was really frustrated when we couldn't really drive because it's it's so good. Yeah. Simple. Simple as that. So now please, we're gonna please bring it back in one piece. I will, me. I will. Okay, Mish has brought the car back. The engineers have said that the car's fine. I'm gonna get some new tires. They're gonna put some new tires on the car, so I'm gonna get peak performance. Here we go then, guys. A truly special moment, it must be said. Signing a contract to race for Bilstein earlier in the day. And now, here we go, onto the track for the first time as a contracted racing driver it really is quite a special feeling. Now to begin with here, wanting to take things very, very carefully. Of course, first couple of laps, there's no need to go too crazy. I'm not trying to set any lap records here. And I had the new tires fitted to the car. I was told to take it somewhat easy for the first portion of the lap because you just want to get those tires up to temperature don't overwork them too early and that's really explaining why we're going fairly um, slow here letting this Porsche go as uh, we go through the NGK chicane at the end of the GP section that car is going to go into the pit lane and we are going to turn left onto the Nordschleife so let me run you through my thoughts as we've got a yellow flag now my first thought here is, of course, as we mentioned, just taking it nice and easy and just becoming accustomed to the car and not doing, it, doing anything too stupid. You see here, this is something we are going to have to get used to as a driver around the Nordschleife, which is emergency vehicles and recovery vehicles on the track at the same time. And it's all good practice. This is something that's going to happen during the racing and therefore getting familiar with what that looks like and what it feels like to go past those kinds of vehicles is all part of the process of racing around here. We've had some back, the car feeling nice and good as uh, the grip slowly comes to me with the tyres beginning to warm up. Now we did have an issue earlier in the day with the diff cooler, um, so the diff was not um, staying cool enough throughout the lap, it was uh, overheating and for this lap I was just checking the dash, you see the little dash in the middle of there and it seemed to be fine, so that was all good news. So through Flugplatz for the first time, as you can probably hear, I wasn't quite sure which gear to go in. Initially starting off in sixth gear and then downshifting to fifth midway through. And this is what we're trying to work out on these opening laps, just which gear should I be in, where should I be braking. As um, we head into Schwedenkreuz, this is always quite a fearsome corner as you go over the crest, very high speed, and then a big braking zone, looking for the curb on the left when it ends, onto the brakes, into Arenberg for the first time. And then this section here, guys, this is this is quite a scary uh, part of the track. In fact, for me, it's probably the, the scariest bit. Very fast, very bumpy. It does unsettle you a fair amount. So we're not wanting to do anything too silly. Can take it nice and easy through here on the first lap 200 kph so still fairly quick but there's definitely a lot of pace to be found and to me i felt like i was doing this in the correct manner um, you don't really want to push 100 percent on your first lap and so i felt like i would i would slowly build up to it there were some yellow flag sections here double waved yellows so 120 kilometers an hour maximum speed through these sections and again all good practice you see there's a big uh, oil leak on the right hand side of the track recovery vehicle broken down vehicle and waiting for the 
green flag. Eventually we got it just before the carousel, letting this uh, VW go just before we get there. So a special moment. First time through the carousel, and I'm sure we'd be doing many laps in this car around this track, but that was the first I've ever done. Now take a look in the rearview mirror. Two cars, and the one that's coming right up to us now is a GT3 car. Very, very quick indeed. My first experience of being overtaken here by a GT3. And just as fast as it appeared, it disappears. It's really impressive to see those cars come flying past. They've got so much more grip, speed, power, you name it, it's got it. Even by the time we get through this corner, it's pretty much disappeared around the next turn. Such is the speed of it. This is the end of the first lap, onto the Dottinger for the first time. This long right-hander is a very fearsome corner. You do have to be very committed. I was not exactly committed on this occasion. But we can now experience this car down the long straight, the Dossinger, see what the top speed is like. Always a good opportunity to have a bit of a bit of a rest before we begin another lap. So well over 200 kilometers an hour here. It does go fairly uphill on this part of the part of the straight. Bit of uh, debris in the middle of the circuit you may have just spotted. Yellow flags don't have to slow down so much for yellow flags a single yellow flag it's when it becomes a double that you do but down the dip 244 kilometers an hour reached we then do have some double yellows and some more lights some more recovery vehicles to contend with so again all good practice and that was a fairly satisfactory opening lap in the car Please just bring it round. I mean, the fact that we haven't crashed is always a positive. And because of the double wave yellow going across the start line here at what looked like quite a slow speed. But, uh, well, if you're obeying yellow flags, then you're just doing the right thing. So onto the GP section. And this, this part of the track is very different compared to the Nordschleife, uh, a lot wider a lot more width in the, in the circuit. The grip feels different. It feels like there's more grip. And you can see there's varying uh, uh, surfaces. The tarmac does change. The curbs are a bit flatter, so you can kind of run the curbs a bit more. Overtaking is always going to be a lot easier on this part of the circuit as well. So something else to get used to. We do have a Porsche just behind. And this is something we're always getting used to is just... Um, checking up for cars behind when we are going to be racing in the NLS it's going to be a multi-class race let's not forget so lots of faster cars lots of slower cars it's going to be a real jumble and it's it's very good to get used to just seeing where cars are in your mirrors getting used to the speed at which they approach you and which line to take when trying to get out of their way now this is where I made my first mistake as I, as we come round here into the chicane, I was kind of, well, I had my Gran Turismo braking points in mind, my GT3 braking points in mind. And obviously that was wrong, because check this out. Straight through the gravel, I probably braked about 50 metres too late there. And, well, luckily for me, the GP section has a fair amount of runoff we can just skip through that section without too much damage. And so, bearing that in mind, that um, mini excursion, I was just a little bit more tentative here. Uh, I would have pushed a bit more than I am had I not done that. Um, so that was just a bit of a wake-up call. Like, you, you know, you've got to really focus here. Uh, that, was, that was not a, an ideal moment. The tyre is just going to go off a little bit. For, for a few uh, minutes, maybe, or a bit less than that. And of course, there's going to be gravel. You can probably hear all the gravel um, coming out from un underneath the car. So second lap into the uh, flugback section. Fast part of the track uh, here. And just try to incrementally increase my speed through this, through this section. Shifting down to fifth gear a bit earlier this time. Minimum speed of 160 kilometers an hour. So a bit quicker than I did on the previous lap. And that's good. We're going in the right direction. And then another very fast part of the track. 
coming down into the foxhole. Last time I reached 200 kph minimum speed, this time about 207. So again, just going a little bit quicker, slowly but surely increasing that speed and my trust in the car. Some more slow sections here. In fact, on this occasion, a code 60, which feels incredibly slow when you've just been going 200. Um, but again, good practice. Good practice for seeing where the flags are. Green flag here. You have to wait until you're level with the flag. And then you can begin accelerating once again. So this is something that we're going to have to get used to in the races. Lots of code 60s, yellow flags, recovery vehicles, and therefore it's all good practice. And, um, you know, of course we want to be driving the car at full speed at all times, but... The reality is that's not going to happen around this track. This is a very fast sweeping left-hander. Requires a lot of commitment. There's definitely a lot more speed in that. 155 kilometers an hour minimum speed on that occasion, but we can definitely go quicker. More recovery vehicles here. This was the Renault Clio that was stricken on the previous lap, now being recovered. And now we can go uninterrupted through the carousel for our second lap just dipping down trying to break a bit later you actually enter the banked section quite late or i did there at least and then onto the power before you exit a little bit later on going off of the jump here with a bit of traffic behind and i think i was being overly cautious i would say with traffic i mean in a racing situation i probably wouldn't be this cautious but I just wanted to sort of see what it feels like to kind of get out of the way. And uh, I, I kind of wanted to overdo it in terms of moving right out of people's way, just so that I kind of experience what that feels like. And then I think in the racing circumstances, um, I won't be so generous, um, but just getting used to what it feels like. Um, so we let the BMW go, we let the Porsche go. And that's near enough the end of my second lap here. For the third lap, I'm going to let it run and you can let me know your thoughts on it.
Now I did want to resume the commentary for this section of the circuit, coming towards the end of this third lap. As just behind in the rearview mirror you can see, we have a Ferrari 296 GT3 car. I was thinking of letting them go, but then there was a double wave yellow for a stricken car just around here. This is ice curve at this left. Normally you'd run the curb on the exit here, but no need when you're going so slow. So we have the emergency vehicle, then we have the stricken vehicle. And then it's a case of waiting for the green flag. And now there's two GT3 cars behind me. We have the Falcon Porsche 911 GT3 uh, for good measure. So just an interesting scenario, trying to let past two GT3 cars at the same time. This is going to happen during NLS. You know, the GT3 cars do race each other very closely indeed. And uh, we're very generous with space. And you see just as quickly as they appear, they disappear with so much more power. It would be so fun to get behind the wheel of one of those cars around this track. Now, eventually, coming through the final corner, this is uh, a corner I think I was getting a lot better around, committing at the right point, apex point, onto the power, onto the straight and hitting 200 kph near enough just as we go underneath the Audi Sport gantry. This was a very cool moment. The GT3 BMW flying past, then a Porsche in tow, trying to get into the tow of both the cars, trying to maximize the speed down this straight on this occasion. There was a piece of debris in the middle of the track here, so we had to just be wary of that. But after three laps, it was time to bring the car in. Fantastic, fantastic. <laughs> I did okay. No, I loved it. The gearing was weird for me. Yes. First laps, happy with it. Yeah, good, yeah. good. We did it, guys. We did First it. First the car. We survived, the car survived. We broke the car, we fixed the car. Pass the <laughs> on a serious note, big shout out to Bilstein for great suspension because we cannot complain about that. It performs very well. And for Black to Black Falcon to actually building such a great car. 100% Bilstein. They've made a great car here. Black Falcon and, you know, these guys. Watching them today, so professional and um, it's really impressive. So that was it, my first ever laps in the Bilstein race car. And uh, what honor it is. You know, this morning, I'd only done three laps around this track, many online of course, but um, only three in real life. I signed a race contract today, got my race permit, drove my race car for the first time. So honestly, it's been a absolutely crazy day. Uh, one I'll definitely remember for a very long time. Now, of course, as uh, Misha says there, big thank you to Bill Stein. For putting this together and making it happen and Black Falcon for being such a great race team and then of course thank you to all my viewers everyone who's watched this video and you know watched this channel over the last couple of years and as you know lots of you would have been around a long time and seen the growth from just playing Forza in the online lobbies getting smashed about to now driving around the Nürburgring as a contracted racing driver but uh, thank you so much, everyone. I will uh, keep you updated on my journey. Um, stay safe and I'll see you next time. Goodbye.